The head of Roman partition has an extremely realistic face, which is called the veristic portrait. We can define verism as an exaggerated hyperrealism that portrays an everyday subject matter rather than heroism or idealism, which comes from the Latin word veris, meaning truth. The portrait is a subtractive marble statue that is sculpted in the round. The head would have once been colorfully painted. It is life-sized, and the exaggerated age and sharp features show the popular veristic style of the time. The man portrayed has a neutral, emotionless expression and extremely exaggerated wrinkles, both of which demonstrate gravitas, which is the seriousness of the mind depicted in the partition's frowning, furrowed expression. Sagging weathered skin represents the man's achievement as a partition. His aged appearance demonstrates that he was likely very wealthy and powerful during his lifetime. His features are sharp. He has a hooked nose and sunken in cheekbones. We can compare this to the terracotta warriors who had sharp and individual facial features. The portrait demonstrates Romans' pride in their heritage. The exaggerated age serves as a form of respect for wisdom and knowledge. The man literally wears the marks of his experiences. Realism of the portrayal shows influence of Greek Hellenistic art and late Etruscan art, while busts of senators conveyed the gruff virtues of Republican Rome, emperors were portrayed differently. Here, inspiration came from classical Greece, and Roman sculptors adopted the ideal proportions and heroic poses of Greek statuary. The head of Roman partition was made in Etricoli, Italy. Anciently named Acriculum, the Umbrium city concluded an alliance with Rome in 308 BC. The modern village lies on the site of the ancient town about two kilometers north of the Roman relocation, which was moved down from the defensible position probably at the end of the Republican era in order to be closer to the curve of the Tiber and the Via Flaminia, which crossed the river here to enter Umbria. The subjects of these portraits were almost exclusively men, and to a lesser extent women, of advanced age, for generally only elders held power in the Republic. These partitions did not ask sculptors to make them appear more noble than they were. Instead, they requested images memorializing their distinctive features and their tradition of the treasured household images. One of the most striking of these so-called veristic portraits is the head of an unidentified partition from Osimo. The sculptor painstakingly recorded each rise and fall, each bulge and fold of the facial surface, like a map maker who did not want to miss the slightest detail of surface change. Scholars debate whether Republican veristic portraits were truly blunt records of individual features or exaggerated types designed to make a statement about personality. Serious, experienced, determined, loyal to family and state, the most admired virtues during the Republic. We can compare this with the head of an old man from Osmo. The Osmo head illustrates that the Romans believed that the head or bust alone was enough to constitute a portrait. The Greeks, in contrast, believed that the head and body were inseparable parts of an integral whole, so the portraits were always full length although Roman copies often reproduced only the head. In fact, Republican sculptors often placed veristic heads on bodies to which they could not possibly belong, as in the semi-nude portrait statue from Tivoli, representing a Republican general. The leather breastplate at his side, which acts as a prop for the heavy marble statue, is the emblem of his rank. But the general does not appear as he would in life. Although he has a typically Republican stern and lined face, the head sits atop a powerful, youthful body. The sculptor modeled the portrait on the statues of Greek athletes and heroes the Romans admired so much and often copied. The incorporation of references to Greek art in these portrait statues evoked the notion of partition cultural superiority. To be portrayed nude also suggested that the person possessed a heroic character.